I'm not sure if you're very familiar with the Cubase preferences. Now I'm talking about these preferences that can be confusing for a lot of users. What if I tell you that some of these default preferences can slow down your workflow? It did for me anyways. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the default Cubase preferences that I changed on my side. And I think you should change too. And there's one of these preferences that I recently changed and it's a good one. I'm telling you, if you change these Cubase preferences now, you'll get a better Cubase experience. All right, let's jump right in. To look at the Cubase settings I want to change, I'm going to open the preferences window. To begin with, I'm going to focus on this window for the full video because there's a lot going there and there's a lot of default settings I want to change. And I'm going to show you the Cubase settings from the preferences window that I changed on my side. OK, uh, so first is the show event volume curves and fades. OK, so if I go under event display from the preferences window and click on audio, you will see the event volume curve and fades, which uh, are both set up to on mouse over. So the first one being the show event volume curve and the second one, the show fade. So that means that, you know, if I have have some um, event automation going on, especially if you're working with Cubase 14. There's a lot you can do when it comes to adding automation inside a Nadio event like I have right here. Uh, and also, you know, the fades are going to appear only when you over your mouse on that specific event. If not, it's going to disappear. What I like to do is to keep it visible all the time so I know what's happening all the time. So for that, you just need to change the on mouse over to always on both. Click on OK and there you go. Now I always have a visual of the automation made on audio events and also the fade in and outs. The second one is record enabled on selected tracks. So I'm going to open back the preferences window, go into editing. Under editing, I will see the project in mix console. And by default, the enable record on selected audio tracks and MIDI tracks are both checked on. Now the problem is this, when I start recording, if I happen to select, you know, the next track or channel, it's going to start recording. OK, and stop the recording from the original channel that I start to record on. And that can get messy, especially if you work with a controller and by mistake, you select another track than the one you are recording from. You're going to get that behavior. So what I do, I go into the uh, Cubase preferences. You go down again uh, under editing to project mix console. And I make sure that these two enable record on selected audio tracks and um, MIDI tracks are both unchecked. OK, and now if I do this again and I start recording, even if I select any other channel, my recording will not be interrupted and I'm not going to start recording on another track than the one that I'm recording right now, which is way more enjoyable when recording. Now, the next one is the auto save interval. So I'm going to go back into my Cubase preferences. Now, under general, you will see the auto save that you can activate or not. It's activated by default. I keep it this way. That will save every X amount of time your session in a auto save backup file. Uh, so basically, by default, it is set up to 15 minutes. So every 15 minutes, uh, there's a back file that is going to be created. But in my opinion, I think 15 minutes is a bit too long. So especially if you, you get into a, a computer crash of some sort. I want to make sure if that happens, I want to make sure I'm not losing too much work. So I set that up to five minutes. So every five minutes, Cubase is going to create a backup file. And I think that is close enough for me. So if anything happens, I'm not going to lose a lot of work. So that is pretty practical. The next one is the up and down navigation commands. All right. So this time around, Let's go under editing and you will see inside the editing window, the use up and down navigation commands for selecting tracks. So I'm going to uncheck that, which is the default setting. And what happens is this. If I have an event selected in my session and I use the up and down arrow keys, which I often do when, uh, when working in Cubase to select another channel, I also have the events like some events moving around and being selected at the same time as I move my arrows, which is quite annoying. And sometimes it's even inconsistent. So if I have like another event from another channel that the one that is selected and I decided to move that selection, 
it's going to jump, it's going to skip a track, and it's just going to be a mess, okay? Consistency is not there at all. So to fix that up, what I do is I make sure under setting that the uh, use up and down navigation commands is for selecting tracks only. So I'm going to check that one on. Now it doesn't matter which event is selected. Using the arrow keys to select a new channel will not select audio events at the same time or media events at the same time, which is way more straightforward and simple to work with. Next is loop cycle activation. I turn this one off. Okay, I'm gonna explain to you why. So I have my left and right locators. That means that I can loop that selection by just clicking on the top of the, the locators and it's gonna activate the loop function. That can also be activated straight on the transport or you can assign a key command for it, uh, which is what I do. But the problem is this, if I need to move those locators around, sometimes it's gonna activate or deactivate uh, the loop cycle at the same time, or if I just wanna move my uh, my playhead around, it's, it's kind of all in the same location. And sometimes it doesn't do what I want to do, basically because of the loop cycle being on all the time. So I just turned it off. So I go into the settings. So there's the clicking locator range in upper part of the ruler activates cycle. I'm gonna turn this one out. And there you go. Now it's not gonna mess around with my hand icon to move my locators or to move my playhead. Okay, which is great. And if I want to activate or deactivate the cycle loop, I can do it from the transport or just use my key command to do so. That's it. Import audio is the next one on the list. If I go back to the uh, Cubase preferences and this time around we'll go under editing, you will go under audio and we have the on import audio files, okay? By default, they are set to open uh, option dialog. So every time you import audio into your Cubase session, you will see that window opening and you know, it's gonna ask you what you wanna do with that imported file. What I do, I set that up to use settings and I checked on copy all files to project folder and convert uh, to project settings also, okay? Which is gonna convert every audio I import into my session to the right bit rate and sample rate of the current session without asking me if I wanna do so, which is one thing less to think about every time I import audio which is great. Track type default color. Okay, this is uh, so useful. I'm gonna go back under the preferences window. We go down to user interface and you will see track type default colors. By default, all the tracks are gonna be gray. So that means that every time you create a channel, it's gonna turn out Great. In my case, I do color code my Cubase sessions every time. And I actually made a video on that that I'm gonna link down below. And also, if you want to download my Cubase color scheme, I'm gonna leave the link also in the description of this video so you can have the same color scheme as I have, which is pretty awesome to work with. So I have my effects channel to a specific color, my instrument channel, a sampler, audio, um, VCA, group channel, so on and so forth. So every time I create an audio track, for example, it's gonna turn out to my default color. And same for any other channel. They all have their own default color. And this is how you can do this. Very practical. Now let's talk about that one setting that I recently changed. And this is thanks to Dom Sigalas. He talked about that on one of his videos. I remember watching that uh, some time ago and I forgot about it, you know, and then it came back to me and I just changed it. And I love it. So again, from the preferences window, we are gonna go under metering and you will see the meters fall back. By default, this one is set up to 12 dBs per second. So what does it do? I'm gonna open up the mix console. And this is what we get. Look at the faders, actually. Let's bring the mix console entirely. Uh, and look at the movement, you know, the speed of the, uh, the metering on the faders, okay? They're smooth, you know, they're not very direct, but they're a bit more on the smooth side. So by changing the meters fall back to the max, which is 40 uh, dB per second, this is what I'm gonna get. It's pretty much, it's so prime, you know, it's prime precise, way faster. And I kinda like that. So it gives me a better representation on what the meters are actually showing me. So it's very good to get a quick, clear, precise metering reading in your Cubase sessions. And that's why I like this one a lot. I don't even know why I didn't apply this one earlier. 
it's a good one. And since we're talking about metering, let me just uh, give you another one here um, and something I talked about on my channel more than once. Again, under metering, there's also appearance. I do color code my meters in Cubase, which is very practical for gain staging purposes. I talked about that before. You can check out my videos on gain staging and it's all there. So I have one color uh, that goes up to minus 18 dBs and then it's gonna turn out to green, fade out to yellow until I reach a minus 12 or so. And then the red zone is where I avoid to go a lot, which is um, everything above minus six dB. So I know when the signal is too quiet, when I'm in the safe zone or when I am a bit too hot, okay? So it's a good way to do it. Once you personalize your Cubase settings to your taste, a very good habit to take is to save your Cubase preferences as a preset. So to the bottom left of the preferences window, we have preference presets. You click on save, it's gonna open the save preset window. You type on the name you want for your preset. And if you wanna update a current preset, click on save and from that same window, just type in the same name as your current preset and just override it and that's it. You know, very simple. Now, let me know on your side if you think there's other Cubase settings that are worth changing, all right? List me everything down below. Until next time, take care and see you.